In Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 49, the Saiyan duo returned to fighting Moro, and once more we were reminded by Vegeta that Saiyans cannot survive in the vacuum of space. But it's not like this is news about the Saiyan race, we have known this information for quite some time. Yet let's go back and explore all the times that it seemed like this wasn't the case, and explain the scenes with science. On numerous occasions, it seemed that the Saiyans were able to survive in space. But how is that possible? Are they able to breathe in space? Or were they actually in space to begin with? After Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 49 was released, once more we had confirmation that they cannot survive in space. But there are outliers throughout the series, and we'll be diving into them today, explaining them, and of course, there's also going to be science included too. Let's begin from the earliest chronological Dragon Ball event. And no, I don't mean starting with Dragon Ball, but with Bardock instead. We have seen different variations of Bardock's story over the years. Whether it's the original OVA, the intro scene from Xenoverse 2, or the newer adaptation from Dragon Ball Minus and the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. Regardless of which one we use, the final moments throughout all of these scenes are virtually the same leaving us to believe that Bardock and Frieza's battle actually happened in space. Before we jump to all the other occurrences, let's quickly run through all the layers of Earth's atmosphere, and once we understand this topic, we'll be able to explain how planet Vegeta's atmosphere would technically work as well. So since our planet is surrounded by the atmosphere, which is a mixture of gases that gradually get thinner and thinner the closer we get to space. This gas mixture is mostly comprised of nitrogen at 78%, oxygen at 21%, and the remaining 1% is a mix of gases like argon, carbon dioxide, and water. On top of providing the necessary oxygen gas we need to breathe, the atmosphere also contains the ozone layer, which works like a filter against harmful UV rays from the sun. The atmosphere is divided into layers, with the thickest one closest to the surface and slowly thinning out as we approach space. Human beings can only survive in the troposphere or the first layer. This layer extends from the ground up to 10 kilometers or 33,000 feet. At that altitude, you'll find most commercial planes flying. This layer also contains all of the weather events that we experience. Next, we have the stratosphere, a layer that Toriyama has brought up several times throughout all of Dragon Ball. In one interview specifically, he was asked how high is Korin's tower, which he replied with about tall enough to reach into the stratosphere, which means it would be taller than the summit of Mount Everest. Based on this information, in a future video, I will be discussing how fighters and other characters were able to survive on both Korin's tower and Kami's lookout with the use of science. In reality, the stratosphere begins at least 10 kilometers above sea level, the temperature would drop to negative 50 degrees Celsius, and it would be uninhabitable for people to say the least. Yet Saiyans would more than likely be able to survive. This layer stretches over the next 40 or so kilometers and is home also to the ozone layer. Then we have the mesosphere, spanning the next 30 kilometers, and it's the coldest regions with temperatures falling once more to negative 100 degrees Celsius. The air is far too thin to breathe here. Even at the beginning of this layer, air pressure is well below 1% of the pressure at sea level, and it continues to drop the higher up you go. From about 100 kilometers to 500 kilometers above ground is the thermosphere layer. The air is basically non-existent here because there is no pressure whatsoever, and it's very sensitive to solar activity, so temperatures can even reach above 1500 degrees Celsius. The northern and southern lights exist here and are still seen on the surface, and satellites also orbit in this layer. And lastly, we have the exosphere, starting at 500 kilometers above ground level, extending into the interplanetary space at 10,000 kilometers. This layer is mainly where the last remaining atoms and molecules escape into space. In fact, the atoms are so far apart that they can travel hundreds of kilometers without colliding into one another. 
Now that we have covered the layers of the atmosphere, we can look back at all the times that seemed like Saiyans were in space. Since we initially started with Bardock, let's go back to him. Now we can take two approaches for explaining this scene. Number one, technically speaking, since during the scene, we can hear several different species of characters speaking, they can't be in space. Audible speech is impossible in space. Space is an imperfect vacuum where sound cannot travel because what we call sound is actually vibrations in the air and in empty space, there is no air. Therefore, Bardock couldn't be in space because he and many other species spoke. Now, if the first point was incredible enough for you, because you're going to say that it's a cartoon, then we have to rely on deeper physics. And we know that planet Vegeta had a gravity 10 times stronger. Now, according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, the attractive forces between two bodies is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distances between them. If one of the masses were really small, say a human body compared to a planet, the force described by this law is what we experience every day as gravity. So the law basically says more mass equals more gravity. Hence why the moon's gravity is smaller than the Earth's gravity, which in turn is smaller than that of Jupiter, presuming that there is a surface on Jupiter that you could stand on. Now I know it was never explicitly said whether planet Vegeta was either physically larger than Earth, denser, or a combination of both, only that its gravity was 10 times larger, so we know it has to be one of those three. Being that gravity is a binding pulling force, the force of gravity is acting on gas particles mass in the atmosphere and presses it towards the center of the planet. Now based on this characteristic, the atmosphere can be larger since the planet's gravity is also larger and will be holding on to the particles that are further away. Moving on to the next scene, when Vegeta destroyed planet Arlium, even though this only happened in the anime and is considered a filler scene, Vegeta and Nappa it seemed to have traveled well outside of the planet when Vegeta had a change of heart and decided to blow up the planet instead. Now very similar to the first point that I made for Bardock, Vegeta could not have been speaking in space. Instead a plausible explanation is that they could have been located in the very very last layer of the planet's atmosphere, in the exosphere. The only unexplained aspect would be how Saiyans can survive by breathing less than 1% of the atmosphere's oxygen amounts, a topic that I'll be diving into in a future video. The very last incident was during Battle of Gods, when Goku and Beerus appeared to be out in space. This incident is easiest to explain as we have evidence from an interview as well as from the manga explaining that they were in the stratosphere and not in space. Now in that same interview, in Toriyama's interview answer, he does say, but thinking about it, they're both alien after all. Maybe they can just breathe. This answer rolls into another topic that I'm thinking about for the future called the physiology of Saiyans. Let me know if you'd want to see this in the poll above. There's only one scene throughout all of Dragon Ball where Goku was seen going into space when he drops Boss Rabbit and his goons on the moon. Since the scene is technically a plot hole, I'm going to be saving it for an entirely separate video. And I promise that the explanation behind it isn't that it's just a gag scene, but can be explained with science. Otherwise, this is the end of the video. I hope that you've enjoyed the topic and that you've liked and commented on the video as well. If you like this content or any of my other videos, Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that way you're notified each time I upload a new video. And now I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, see ya. Make sure to subscribe and be sure to turn on post notifications. Alright, it's time for me to get back to training.